Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we are gonna paint this little spooky autumn tree. Before we get started, make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. There you'll also find a link to my website where you can sign up for my mailing list. My annual Halloween marathon is coming up soon, so make sure you sign up for my mailing list so that you can be notified when I have more details for that. Now let's get started. Okay, today I am using a 6x6 Frederick's Red Label canvas, so this is a much smaller little canvas. I thought that some of these Halloween paintings might be really cute on these little canvases. You could certainly do this on a regular size canvas if you like. Now since this is a brand new out of the package canvas, I have not gessoed it or anything. I am going to use my number six cloud brush and we're going to just generally scrub on some clouds. I'm not going to get too crazy with cloud shapes. I have some black and some white and I'm going to pick up some white about like that. See there's no globs but the tip of the brush is coated nicely and just a little bit of black. Remember that black is very, very strong. So if you pick up as much black as you do white, the black is gonna take over. So I'm gonna use half foot pressure. See how my brush is bent halfway? It's not flat like that. Just bent halfway, and I'm just lightly gonna scrub. I'm not digging at the canvas. My scrubbing here is very light. Just flip my brush over to get that bit of paint on the other side. See, that's how much paint I picked up. It only covers a very small area, and then I go back for more. And every time I pick up more paint, it's gonna be a little different of a mixture. Maybe sometimes it'll have more black, sometimes more white, maybe sometimes all I'll pick up is one or the other. If I feel like it looks too uniform, like I feel like that looks pretty uniform, I think I'll just come back in and get just a little bit of white. And I can lay that in, just kind of break it up. Don't stress yourself out about making specific cloud shapes. Let's give it just kind of a, a cloudy sky feel, right? With kind of billowing grays, darker areas and lighter areas. See how I come up onto the tippy toe of my brush when I want to make a soft transition between two colors. So half foot pressure there to lay it down. And right here where those two colors are meeting, I come up onto the toe of my brush. And it's very light pressure. Just to kind of nudge them together. A little bit of white. Let's fill in this area over here, a little bit lighter. If you feel like you're pretty practiced at making clouds, you can certainly come in here and you know, make very specific cloud shapes. I just picked up white that time. As I move down, I am gonna get a little bit lighter. More white, actually I'm gonna wipe a little of that off. I'm gonna pick up a little more black. I'm gonna get just a couple areas that are quite dark. See, I can even blend it in with that super light area just with the pressure of my brush. Barely, barely touching, see that? I like that, so again, I picked up more black than white. I'm just gonna continue that right here for a minute. If I don't like it, it's okay. I can take care of it with a little bit of white later. Let's make that dark area really interesting by taking a little bit of white and I'm just gonna pop a little bright spot in there. That helps insinuate clouds a little bit more. And I think from here on out, I'm just gonna pick up white. They're still gray in my brush. See that, all I picked up was white. Just so I can get a nice light horizon. I'm gonna take away that little bright white splotch. There we go, much better.
So this could easily be worked up into a painting that's not Halloween at all. You know, I just did it in black and white and then, you know, the stormy sky and gave my tree kind of a craggy shape. But really, if you wanted to change it and maybe even give it like a, a sunny, you know, summer look, just substitute the black for a blue. You could do the sky in the exact same way, just with blue and white and you know change the shape of your tree so instead of a really you know angular and twisty craggy looking tree like i'm gonna do you could do a much smoother a little bit more natural looking tree and you would get like a, a pretty summer day look i picked just a little white i'm gonna break this up we just have pretty solid color in there just kind of popping some bright white in there, here and there. A little lighter right in here. All right, now we're gonna add our rocky ground. And to do that, I'm gonna use my number eight filbert. And this is a nice newer filbert. This isn't my old scraggly one that I always use. I'm gonna start with just black. So I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of black. And I'm gonna let the tip of the brush kind of define the rock so the tip of my brush is round so rather than trying to draw real you know specific rock shapes see I'm just kind of nudging see I just kind of tap just getting the the general shape of the ground on there now some of the sky is still wet and I am picking a little bit of that up and I'm actually not worried about that so don't sweat it if you're picking a little of that up and getting kind of a gray look, that's okay. Because we're gonna add some highlights to it anyway. I am doing the same thing here. I'm still just kind of nudging because I can see those brush strokes, especially since I'm picking up a little hint of white out of the sky. I'm getting a little bit of a highlight. So I don't wanna completely lose that then I, I don't have to work so hard for it when we start adding highlights in a minute. Just gonna do that same kind of nudging thing until this whole area is filled in. Now I'm gonna go to my long liner and I wet this in my jar. And I apologize, I didn't tell you when I wet my other brushes. So I did wet my filbert right before I used it. My cloud brush that I used in the sky, I used that brush dry. Now decide where you want your tree. I want mine on the one third line over on this side. So it's gonna kinda come up and then spread from there. I want it to almost appear like maybe it's a bit windy in here. Now, if you're not comfortable making an entire tree with a long, thin liner brush like this, that's okay. You can use a, a wider brush and then use the liner for the little branches if you prefer. So I'm gonna get some black. You might wanna use just a little extra drip of water so that your paint flows nice and smooth, or you could use soft body paint. I'm just using Liquitex Basics. I'm not using heavy body or anything fancy today. Roll that so I've got a nice point. And right now I'm not gonna sweat too much about the shape and thickness of the trunk. I'm really just gonna kinda say it's right in here. And see how I've kind of got my brush it's bent almost completely flat just kind of laying in where those branches are gonna be and I know that holding your brush back like this might feel kind of awkward you might be really tempted to you know get in there like this and put your hand on your canvas but especially when making these craggy trees man, let that control go let it do weird things if it's gonna do weird things. So on the back of my plate here, I'm actually gonna show you the brush stroke that I'm using to make the wider part of the tree. So for the most part, I'm going, you know, my brush is angled down like that, but you could do it this way as well. So touch it to the canvas, press it flat, and then I kinda move it up and down, and you can even wiggle it sideways as you need. And then see how I release my pressure until it's up on the tip? So that might be a little bit of kind of an advanced technique. You might need to practice that, 
But, you know, if that's not a technique you're comfortable with, it doesn't mean you can't do the tree, just do it however you're comfortable. But I just wanna make sure that you can see how I'm using it so that you can practice that if you like. I like to do trees like that, particularly craggy trees like this because I lose control of my brush. It gets away from me and it does really weird choppy things like that. And that's what gives me an awesome craggy old tree. And I can always come back and widen it out if I need to. Again, my brush is pressed completely flat there. And I can smooth out any of those bumps that might have just been too much for me. I think what's exciting about painting a tree like this is it's going to look so different every time. This tree already looks so completely different from, from my first practice one that I did. And I also think it's really kind of freeing to let your brush jump around like this because you don't have to be worried about it, you know, staying on track. If I'm doing my brush like this and it gets off, well, then I guess another branch goes right there. That way I don't have to worry so much about, you know, planning out where I'm going to place all of my branches. Some of them happen on their own. And I'm just using black still. We will add some white but I want to get the bulk of my tree on here first. Now I'm going to add a bunch of little tiny detail branches because I think the more branches you have on here, the more realistic and lifelike your tree is going to look. But before I zoom in there, what I want you to know is the way I'm holding my brush. I'm going to be holding it clear back here okay at no point am I gonna choke up on my brush down here I'm gonna keep holding my brush clear back here my arm is gonna be extended so I'm not coming in you know like this I'll be holding it like that and you know generally going in to start on a branch but if it doesn't start on the branch if it kind of starts in a weird place it's okay I'm not worried about any of that Okay, still just using the black. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say there's a little branch off of there. See how I'm just kind of, just sketching on little bits wherever I feel like I need them. I'm not worried about, you know, if the, if the line breaks up or if it doesn't start exactly on the branch. I'm not worried about any of that. You know, when you're looking at a tree, you don't necessarily see where every branch comes from, where it's attached. You don't see all of that. Really, you're just gonna kind of see a tangle of, you know, little tangles of sticks and that's really it. See how loose I'm being with these branches. That's what I want you to do too. I know it's gonna feel super awkward at first. The very first time you get in there and allow yourself to do this. It's gonna be difficult. And not difficult, like the technique is difficult. It's gonna be hard for you to let go, to kind of give up some of that control. But really just like everything else in painting, it, all it takes is practice. You know, the more you get in here and just kind of slash in some little tree branches, almost randomly, the easier it's gonna be. You know, it's only hard. It's really only hard the first time. Let's get a few of these going up off of the edge of the canvas. That keeps it a little more interesting. widen that out. I think our craggy old tree is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, I'm still using my liner and I have a little more paint on my brush than I did the last time. And I'm just going to define where I think some leaves are. I want to kind of make it look like the wind is blowing a little bit. So all of my leaves are kind of going to be pointing off to the side. Again, be really loose with this. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and just kind of bounce it. 
Don't try to make real specific leaves. And if that bounce gets out of control and you put a leaf somewhere where you hadn't planned on it, let it be there. I'm not gonna fill this tree with leaves. I'm really just kind of putting them in places where I like the shape and I just wanna accent it. One thing I don't want you to do with your leaves is to, you know, cluster them like this. Instead, decide where they're gonna be and they don't even have to start on a branch. You could start it down here and just kind of bounce. Maybe that's all the leaves you need in that area. Come to another area. You know, just little randomy bits like that. I think just a few more. I don't really like the way this branch here looks, but that's okay because that's what leaves are there for. Notice I didn't cover it entirely. I feel like just putting a couple on top of it helps hide it enough. I think that's gonna be about it. All right, let's add some highlights to our tree. I'm still using my long liner, but again, you can use a different brush if you're more comfortable. And I still have black on it. I'm gonna come into my white and just kind of poke into it, pull out a little bit on the end of my brush. Again, don't be real specific here. Start wherever you want, kind of pressing my brush flat and letting it do what it's gonna do. If I wanna get rid of a, like a hard line in the highlight color, I just come back with just black and just kind of smear over it. I can dash over it. Whatever gives me the look that I'm going for. Tiny poke more of white. Really, I'm just accenting kind of the, where the branches separate from the tree trunk. And this is gonna look totally messy and just really kind of off for a little while, and that's okay. I know it can be super easy to start judging you're painting and you know decide, oh, this does not look like highlights on a tree trunk. This just looks like a mess. But right now, really don't. I'm not picking up any more black right now. I'm just picking up little pokes of white. So all I'm doing is just kind of playing with the idea of where some of these highlights are gonna be. And I haven't done the ground yet, so I don't need to worry about that. Any of these highlights that I don't like I can get rid of later. So there's no sense in trying to make my white highlights be perfect right now. We'll just extend a little bit of it into some of the larger areas on the branches. Just little points of the white. See my brush isn't bending. Just kind of dashing it on there. Take a little bit of it up into here. But no, don't worry, I'm not gonna go highlight all of those little tiny branches. I don't recommend that you do either. That's just, that's way too much work. Who needs that kind of work? See again, that flat, just kinda wiggling the brush side to side while it's pressed flat. Here's a little secret. If you wanna make a tree branch look like maybe it's a little deeper into the tree around the other side, just don't put any highlights on it. So I didn't highlight this bit here and this one here, I don't think I'm gonna highlight. So they'll seem a little bit farther, a little deeper in. I did pick up just a tiny hint of black there just cause my brush was getting kind of dry and mostly white. I'm gonna keep a little hint of that dark. The reason I'm keeping some black on my brush is because it helps avoid getting anything being too white. Just constantly keeps it in a state of, you know, blending. That was maybe just a little too white, so I'm gonna come in and just poke into the black and do the same thing, see? You won't lose anything, don't worry about it. And I got off my line there, so I just put another branch on. The thing about trees, 
especially old craggy ones, is they can have whatever personality you like. They can look like whatever you want them to look like. I'm trying to get a little more white. I really want to amp up my highlights here. See, now I'm just kind of dashing it, letting it be a little bit more true, placing it a little bit more specifically than before. Since that paint on my tree is still wet and quite thick, I can really just brush over it to help blend some of it back. Now I'm starting to get knots in my tree, insinuated that I didn't intentionally put there like that one. I like that. So I'm going to leave it and I may actually come back in and just make sure that, that it looks intentional there. Just made sure it had a nice bright outline around it. I see another one right here. So we'll just make sure that it's a little more obvious. If it doesn't seem obvious enough with the white highlight, I'm just gonna wipe some of that off, pick up a little bit more black, and just really make sure it's nice and dark in there. And you can do that anywhere. Like right here, I feel like it's too gray. I'm gonna bring a little more dark gray in there. Just kind of helps it seem a little bit more twisty and gnarly. I think that's good for our tree right now. I got a little extra water on my long liner again, just black. And let's do some really gnarly grasses. So, oh, I didn't fill in that corner too well. That's okay. So kind of the same thing as when we made our branches. So I'm going to come up and just kind of let it flick out in different directions. I'm, I'm going to let my brush do different things every time. So there's, sometimes I'm just bringing it straight up. Sometimes kind of give it a little flick at the end. So we get some really, you know, dry kind of twisty grasses looking. I'm going to keep it quite dark down here at the base. Let's do some over here too. So just kind of up and flick. Maybe there are even little bits of gnarly tree that's trying to grow up. Yeah, I like that idea. And I'm just gonna leave all of these little grasses and stick bits, just black. That's gonna push them behind the tree a little bit more. But if you wanted, you could add highlights to them too. It's just gonna help pull them into the foreground so right now where mine are so dark and my tree is so light, they seem like they're quite a ways behind the tree. Maybe, you know, a few feet or whatever. But if you put highlights on them, maybe they'll seem like they're right here in line with the tree. So it just really depends on the look that you're going for. It's not right or wrong. I'm just going to taper that off there. And just a couple more back here. There. Let's add our highlights to our ground. So I'm going back to my filbert and I'm just gonna get a little bit of black on here. Same principle as when we were highlighting the tree. I just keep a little smear of black on there so that I don't end up with anything pure white. I'm gonna come in and just swipe just a little bit of white. You see that? It's not a blob. It's just a little dash of white. And again, just kind of letting the tip of the brush indicate where those rock tops are some down here do not just highlight it right along this top edge because you probably have some rocks that kind of come out this way as well I'm just picking up little bits of white same amount of white as before no black right now and again I am just kind of feeling out where I want these highlights if I come in here and I put a bright highlight right there and I think oh that kind of goes against my my light source or I just don't like it, then that's okay. i show you that so that I can show you how easy it is to fix. I'm going to come back in and just grab some black and right back over it. I can do that on any area where I feel like it just got to be too much. 
I'm just dashing out kind of the bottom of these. See how much pressure I'm putting on my brush? It's not really even blending it's, or bending. It's just kind of just like that. Just to smooth out any lines I don't like. I can come back and get just a little bit more white and kind of play with the highlights there too. Now the one thing I want to make sure of is that my highlights on my rocks are not brighter than the highlights on my tree. Right now in that area over here they kind of are so I'm not going to worry about them right now. The reason I don't want them brighter than the highlights on my tree is because my tree is really my focal point. So if my rocks are brighter than the tree the rocks are going to be you know what you kind of look at and I don't want that to happen. So for now I'm not worried about those being brighter. I'm just going to leave them, finish up everything else, and then we can come back and take care of it. All right, a little bit more black. I haven't cleaned off my brush, so it's still, you know, just kind of a dark gray. And again, that super light dusting pressure right over top of the white but because I'm not putting very much pressure on it, it's not eradicating the white, it's just, you know, kicking it back, making it a little darker. Just getting rid of a couple of areas that have too much light on them for my taste. Make sure you stand back. I know I preach that to you guys in every video because it's, it really is so important. Stand back to decide what you do and don't like. Okay, I'm sticking with my long liner and now I have some Cad Red Medium and Cad Orange and these are both heavy body. Remember I use the heavy body and the cadmiums because they're so much more opaque and they're just much more vibrant and beautiful colors. So I'm kind of nudging into that red so I get a good amount on the end of my brush. See that? It's a little bit of a ball. Now roughly where I put these black leaves is where I'm going to put some red leaves. And no, I'm not going to come in here and try and, you know, paint over every black leaf. I'm just going to take a cue from where I put them and kind of, you know, put some red ones roughly in the same area. Remember that I'm going to put some orange too, so there's no need to, you know, completely cover the area. I'll leave rooms for some of my orange. And I will still be able to see some of those black leaves, and that's exactly what I want. That's why I put them there. Remember to keep a good amount of paint on your brush, quite thick. If it's too thin and your, your leaves kind of break up, then I feel like you'll kind of lose them. They won't be quite so obvious. Let's pull that over here a little. Okay, I'm not gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna come in and just dunk straight into my orange. Maybe I'll start just kind of outside of the red while I've got that heavy orange. And then as it wears off, I can bring it in here so it, it almost blends. Take those leaves off in interesting directions. And in some of these little clumps, do a little more of the orange than in other areas. And if you feel like your tree needs it, you could come back in and add a little bit of yellow, you know, for kind of a final punch of color. I don't feel like mine needs the yellow. So I think I'm gonna skip that. I'm just gonna focus on, you know, this orange and red. Still have not picked up any red, just little clumps of orange. I feel like if I cleaned my brush off, 
then losing that red, I would have gotten a bit more of, you know, a very distinct difference between the red and the orange in the tree. And I feel like that would look really phony. So that's why I didn't clean off my brush. Now down here on the ground, we'll add a few fallen leaves. I still haven't cleaned off my brush. I'm gonna go right into the red. Now I don't wanna get too crazy with it and I'm pretty much gonna keep my leaves in these darker areas. We'll say that those are kind of little recessed areas where some leaves might be sitting. Let's see what it looks like if we have just a little bit of leaf sitting in there too in that little hole in the tree. A little bit of orange. And I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm going to sign it. And there's your creepy little autumn tree. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me. Sometimes I really enjoy painting on a smaller canvas like this. So you'll be seeing some more of these six by sixes in the near future. And I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsor Fredericks for being so awesome and providing these for me. Again, remember that my annual Halloween marathon is coming up. I will be broadcasting live and replaying some older videos, maybe sneak in a couple of new ones taking your questions in chat, and we are gonna have a great time. Last year we went for 10 hours, so this year um, my goal is to see if we can go a little bit longer than that. Also, I will be raising money through Super Chat for a charity, so I will have more information for you on that as we get closer to the date, which I also haven't set yet. The official date for the marathon is coming. Anyway, thank you as always for painting with me, everyone. It means a lot to me. I'll see you next time.